shut up and sit down. Hi guys, Andy from Big Max Workshop Painting Studio, and it's an uh, exarch from the Howling Banshee range we're painting. And this is uh, for the studio army, and it's also going to um, an opportunity for us to get the new base sizes as well. So we start off with a black prime, and then going over with Israeli sand, which is also a, um, a prime layer, uh, which has been done through the airbrush. So I've given everything a bit of a um, uh, sepia wash. And now we're go, uh, going straight into it with all the blacking out of all the detail work, uh, getting that nice dark uniform uh, base colour to work with uh, across all the details so uh, everything gets a nice um, base colour when we uh, start adding some extra colour into the model. What we're doing now is using Banshee Brown by Army Painter and I'm thinning this out and it's going to be sort of a, a base layer come highlight as well as I want the Israeli sand um, to show through on certain areas as it's a really nice colour for Howling Banshees to start with and I'm using the glazing techniques to just uh, bring those colours up so adding really uh, nice highlights and now what I've done is added some Scale 75's birch into it uh, to uh, start to pick out those highlights once I've got a nice smooth coat of the uh, Banshee Brown over the uh, more raised areas of the detail work. So now, after the um, birch has gone down, I'm just using some ivory by Model Colour. And this is going down as a final edge highlight. So I want it to be a, um, a yellowy bone colour rather than a white. Uh, so the ivory just makes much more sense to uh, uh, use as a final highlight rather than a white. As it just uh, keeps a touch of yellow in there, makes it more bone-like rather than uh, more ghostly. So now I'm adding some uh, recessed washes um, onto the model. This is really thinned down. It's seraphine sepia again. And I was just adding some nice um, rich colours into the recess areas um, just to uh, add some more colour to the, um, the armour. And it just uh, breaks up some of those uh, really vib vibrant white uh, armour plates. Um, just adding that little bit more bone colour into it. So back in with the ivory again, uh, just to tidy it all up. And uh, this is uh, just adding those final edges again, um, wherever the uh, uh, wash had um, tainted some of the highlights. And it's just bringing up those uh, final points. As you can see, it's making the armour really pop. Um, the cool thing about Eldar is, that, is their armour shapes is really nice. So you've got plenty of movement on, on the armour, uh, really making it look interesting. And just adding some more of the ivory uh, to the extremities now, um, adding those uh, highlights in. As you can see, it's just uh, building up those really thin layers of the ivory um, in the mo more uh, extreme parts. Just adds those really nice spot highlights just to make it really uh, stand out. Onto the hair, um, this is going to be. Um, Deep Red by Scale 75. Now I've gone for a uh, classic Howling Banshee look, so it's uh, these strike, um, striking red colours and a deep green uh, straight off of box art. Uh, this is just my take on it. Onto the, uh, the uh, helmet, and the uh, faceplate has been left white. Uh, the actual helmet itself is. Um, going to be done in a green colour, just like in the box art, um, using a base of Caliban Green to get the nice uh, rich colour on there. Uh, it's a really good colour to work with, um, and the Scale 75s um, have a nice range that go with it really um, really well, and just uh, adds those nice highlights to it, nice and gentle. The uh, leather work is getting done in um, model, uh, Vallejo's game colour Dark Flesh Tone. Uh, this is a colour what I uh, haven't expected to use uh, for some time. As you can see, it's a very nice, um, rich, leathery colour. It really adds a lot of uh, depth to the model. 
uh, alongside all those real pale cores. The jewellery was based in hash-up copper by Games Workshop, a real nice uh, solid colour there. Uh, gives it a nice um, rich jewellery effect and then it's uh, gone over uh, with Rune Lord Brass for the first layer. I've also gone over all the jewellery, all, all the gemstones in the same colours uh, as you've got the, um, the casing for the uh, soul gems uh, around, around the uh, that nice gem. Uh, so I'm adding a Agrax Earthshade wash to all of the um, uh, jewellery trim now. Uh, just add a bit of depth onto the uh, colour and uh, we're going to start highlighting all that with uh, Psychoric Bronze. The uh, Spirit Stones have been uh, base coated in Sharpnel Red as well, uh, which was caught off camera sadly. The Psychoric Bronze obviously just leading on uh, the highest points of the armor of the jewelry. This is uh, just to give that fine, nice highlighted uh, effect to it. So I'm adding another layer of the uh, Agrox Urso just to add a touch more depth to the um, to the model uh, on all the uh, recess areas around the uh, jewelry. Also around the um, air, the spirit stones as well. On to the lever again, and this is Light Rust by Panzer Racers. Uh, real nice um, uh, colour to go over the, uh, the flesh tone. Um, takes it away from a, a very deep flesh colour to more of a leather. Uh, obviously this is kept as uh, thin as possible, so um, it really nicely goes over and so leaves some of the ready uh, leather underneath. So I've now added a touch of Coconut Copper into the uh, mixture. As you can see, it just uh, makes it a little bit more orangey, but uh, the river layer's been so thin, you see, still seeing uh, the darker colors underneath, and just brings out those uh, highlights nice. And you're gonna start getting a really interesting mixture um, on, a, on all that, um, on our, all the pouches and the leather strapping. So this is pretty much pure coconut copper now. I'm just um, focusing on the uh, leading edges. As you can see, I'm just starting to feather uh, the edges, leave a little bit of texture and the color, uh, darker colors underneath. I'm just uh, starting to um, keep the, air, um, the areas I'm highlighting very, very narrow. So I've added some birch into the uh, mixture now, and this is getting focused right on the um, leading edges of, of the um, leather work, uh, leaving the uh, darker sections completely untouched by it, uh, leaving some of the uh, shading in on the uh, leading areas as well, just to add a little bit of life. As you can see, I'm just starting to uh, add sort of um, varying different uh, streaks to the uh, leather, so it's also slightly worn. and a little bit more birch in there just to uh, add some flaws into it. As you can see, I'm just adding some more uh, birch. It's pretty much pure birch at this level, and uh, just mostly focusing on all the um, floors now, uh, just to add a little bit more life to them and make them a bit more uh, stand outish. Uh, obviously, you don't need to go this far. Uh, it's just uh, obviously for a tutorial, we we'll go a we we'll do a little bit more work than normal. Back onto the uh, jewelry, and this is uh, another layer of Psychorex bronze uh, going over the. Uh, the wash uh, just to tidy things up and you're just using a really narrow brush just to add a few nice little highlights onto it 
on any of the areas that are a little bit darker than I wanted them to be. Got another highlight with bright brass now is just to really brighten the leading edges up as we're going to go up a little bit more on the uh, most extreme edges and the, uh, the high points just to uh, make them a little bit more fancy. Onto the uh, cloak, this uh, added some Scale 75's green skin flesh. Uh, again, this is about 50-50, uh, just to start brightening up those uh, robes and uh, the cloak areas and the helmet. Added some more green skin flesh into it, just to uh, start adding that life into it now. As you can see, starting to bring the colour to get um, bring the colour out. It's really going to start being a bit more vibrant, a lot more colourful uh, once this uh, um, green skin flesh is finished in. So I've added some Irati green now, which is quite a vibrant green. And this is uh, just going to start bringing that colour up really nicely. It's going to start uh, really adding some life to the uh, hotspots of the uh, robe and around the helmet, uh, around the uh, face plate, just to uh, make it stand out a little bit more, uh, add a bit more colour into it. Added some uh, more Irati green now. As you can see, it's just uh, onto the edges now, just right on the uh, lead points. Uh, with a really narrow brush and um, just uh, making those uh, colours really pop out so it makes it look a lot more interesting there's a, a nice amount of light uh, reflecting off the um, piece now so on to the uh, hair piece now this was an absolute swine to put together uh, comes <laughs> The uh, head itself comes in four separate pieces, and the hair is in three of those. Uh, this is uh, blood red going over the um, the nice dark red there. Um, I'm picking out, um, leave, I'm picking out the majority of the uh, texture, but I'm leaving some of the uh, deeper colours um, there in the recesses. I'm also uh, only focusing on the upper areas now. So a little bit of Antares red is going onto it as well. Uh, doing exactly the same thing, uh, but obviously on a more narrow stage, and uh, we're just bringing that um, nice flowing head of hair to a real nice and vibrant colour. So uh, it's now a bit of Aldebaran red. Um, you've seen me use this mix before. As you can see, it's just adding that, a nice bit more of an orangey red, making it look a bit more flame-like, a bit more lifelike. Uh, so it's really going to stand out against a nice dark, um, nice bright white uh, armor. It's also going into the same, uh, doing the same thing on the uh, gems as well. So there we have it. I've just gone back onto the um, jewellery. I've got a, a touch of uh, heavy metal just on the uh, most extreme points. And obviously I've, put, uh, I've done, finished the power blade, uh, which I hadn't decided what core to do. Um, so I did that off camera. As always, um, a lot of fun to paint this one. And I've uh, also just finished the squad, uh, obviously to a slightly lower level. But uh, thank you for watching this. We've thrown a pin wash on, and that really did add, add an extra amount of depth of the model really sort of brings out the uh, detail work as always though we've got some huge thank yous to make uh, so thank you to our patrons and obviously you guys who uh, sit and what um, subscribe to our videos so uh, massive thank yous to our patrons which are the York boys matt ludwig offbauer d Wack, mark dave and tom you're our um, top paying patrons and we couldn't do this without you also huge thank yous to the out outpost uh, local game company based in Sheffield really good guys uh, really helpful if you want to buy any um, reduced price models for 
uh, or equipment from uh, any other ranges what you're interested in uh, check them out through our link in the description you get now normal 15 to 20 percent off and also we get five percent store credit at no cost to you so that helps it out a massive amount anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this video and i shall catch you in the next one take care and we'll see you soon bye bye